The subject of this video is Microsoft SharePoint. Grab your coffee and let's get started. Microsoft SharePoint is Microsoft's content management, document management tool set. It's been around for over 20 years and it's a very popular tool set for collaboration, document management, and information capture, organization, and sharing. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview and I'm going to show you the top tasks that you'll need to carry out as a user of SharePoint to be productive and make your team productive. The SharePoint homepage has four main areas, left navigation, center, it's content, right, where the settings and other content are and the top is a search. The left hand navigation consists of home, conversations, which is Outlook. It'll launch Outlook Web, the new Outlook Web, to get access to your messages, your calendars and your to-dos. And it also takes you to the default document library. That's where you store documents. You can upload, search, filter, reorganize. Let's upload a document. You can see how it operates. Very straightforward. You can also drag and drop a document to this area. You can experiment with that. Open up the browser such as this and then uh, go to Explore and then browse to a file. You can drag and drop it. Here's the sharing function. So you can click on the share icon, enter the person's email, select where they can edit, view, or can't download. And then you just uh, click the uh, send. Next, we have um, shared with us. So any document shared to that site. This is the um, OneNote. So there is a OneNote that's also created with the site. So here you can make pages and add notes. Uh, look up OneNote. I have a video on OneNote. And there's also many on YouTube. These are pages. So the home page is a custom page. You could also create more custom home pages or pages for other things like instructions or just a custom home page with maybe instructions on it or more detail about your maybe your project, your SharePoint site, your team. Here are the uh, site contents. So within SharePoint, everything's a library or a list. So you have the document library. You have the form templates library. Um, if you created any lists or other document libraries, they'd be located there. And then here is the uh, recycle bin. Anything you delete will go to the recycle bin for, I think, 60 or 90 days. And um, you can retrieve it. So there's a primary recycle bin and a secondary. So the primary goes there after 30 days. And then after 30 days, it goes to the secondary, I think, for 30 or 60 days. And you can restore it from there. So you can also edit the left navigation by clicking on the edit. You can drag and drop the items around. And here you can associate the SharePoint site with a Teams channel. So um, you can add the uh, site to a team uh, or the team is actually created for the site. And then you have the uh, Microsoft Teams, um, you know, audiovisual conferencing and uh, a library and uh, that sort of thing. So a lot of functionality provided within the SharePoint site. And uh, let's move on to the uh, content area. The content area of the page displays notes, most recent activity, documents, links, and the document library is the default library that comes with the site. You can add more libraries if you like. Uh, at the uh, bottom, it's all the activity documents that have been worked on recently. And this area is the news area. You can create a news uh, item. So you could talk about you know, new events on the team or the department, whatever the uh, site is focused on. Uh, at the top, you can create a new list, a document library, a page. If you don't see this functionality, then you're not an owner. That is part of the permission levels within a SharePoint site. If you look up uh, SharePoint permissions, there's more information about that. On the right side of the page, we have the settings. We have a link to um, how to, so you can go through and see some uh, next steps on how to set up your site. It's kind of a guide. There we have the settings icon. We have uh, add an app, edit a page, site permissions, site information, changing the color, the template, variety of things in here. Now, depending on what 
permission level you have. If you're an owner, you can see all this. If you're just a visitor or a member, um, then you'll be limited. If you look up SharePoint permission model on Google, you can find more information. I'll have a link in there as well. So th there's the document library. Um, you can look at the library settings. So um, the, the columns for the library, the permissions for the library, uh, any kind of customizations that you want to do to the library to make it easier to use and find data. Um, we have a site template section, so you can change the look and feel of the uh, site. It can drastically change the look and feel of the site. So from a usability perspective, you may want to stick with one template. And maybe you have a special template for an intranet or communication site, but the team sites have the same same site. Here's some usage analytics. So once your site's been in use for a while, you'll have some usage care, uh, analytics about you know the number of people that have visited, what they've looked at, what device they've used, uh, the time that they've accessed the site. Um, and if you look here, here's the uh, permissions. So you can go into the permissions area. You can add people to uh, a particular group. So owners being the most control, visitors being the least. And here you have advanced permissions. So on this page, you can see the permission groups. And again, search on um, SharePoint permission models on Google, and you'll get a, a document about this. Permission groups are used to add people to the group and give them access. So the owners have the highest level and the visitors have the lowest. I recommend adding people to the visitors or the members just uh, to keep uh, uh, all the cooks out of the kitchen. Um, and then here you have the access request settings. By default, they're set up just fine. They go to the owner's group. You can also check permissions. You can grant access. Um, here you would enter the email address and then decide on what permission level to use. These are things you can go through and experiment with in your own time. Let's create a document. So go to your homepage, click on Documents, and then click on New, and then select a document type. So here we have uh, Word for the web, which is the web version of Word. And you can type in some text, anything you like. Um, when in uh, using the, the web version of uh, the applications, you know, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, the documents will save automatically. So if you go back to the library, you can see the documents have been created for you and saved. So let's find a document. We can use the search within SharePoint. That's the box at the top of the page. Go to the home page and then click on search box and enter your information and you will find the document. Now, search is context sensitive. So if you use search from the document library, it will only search the library. So let's share a document. That's a common task. Um, you browse to the document library, click on the share icon next to the document and you'll be prompted with the share page so here you enter the person's email address enter a message so the person knows what the uh, share is about and then you select you know the permission edit view can't download can't download they can view but they can't download the file and that's important in some strict security circumstances so once you've um, shared the document they will receive an email Another way to share is to go on site settings, site permissions, go down to advanced permissions. And here you see the classic way of sharing. Here you have the permission groups, so the members, they can uh, edit. They're the second highest uh, permission level. Here you just enter the person's email address, and then you can type in a message. And show options essentially is do they receive an email or not uh, with the message that they've been given access to the site. So type in your message and click share, and that person will then receive access and, and email. Let's uh, check permissions. Checking permissions is helpful in diagnosing access problems. So click on site settings, permissions, advanced. And then here is an icon, check permissions. Enter the person's email address and then click check now, and that'll give you a report of what access they have. So if it says no access, then they need to be granted access. You can add them to one of the groups. There is a link to access the team that's associated with the SharePoint site. You can click on 
teams and uh, the team will load it'll either load in the web version or the full app version that is up to you and here uh, you have a team's channel for video conferencing audio conferencing you look up one of my videos on teams Usage information um, provides you with a, a glance at who is using the site, what they're using, when they're using the device. Uh, so there's a, a variety of information here. And of course, after your site's been in use for a while, there'll be more data. You know, here we have popular documents, the device, when it's being accessed. And you can also generate an external access report so you know who has access to the site. Uh, externally. Up here in the right, we can select, you know, seven days, 30 days, 90 days. The data is only kept in the tenant for about 90 days. Check with your network administrator uh, regarding licensing, and the license has an impact on how long the data is kept. Let's add a news item to the home page. So go to the home page, click on home, and then go to news and click add and say a new post and then select a template such as event or newsletter and then um, enter a title and enter your text and when you're uh, all finished up and you've added everything that you need to add click on post and send in the upper right hand corner and then select who you want to send the uh, information to. You could also just post the article if you like, but here you can send it out to a distribution list or add individual persons. Um, you can add a message and when you're done, just click on send and then the message will be uh, sent out uh, and posted to the site. So now that we've collected send, let's go have a look at the uh, home page and now you can see the article is uh, posted. Let's add a link to the site. A link could be a URL that points to Google. It could be a URL that points to an external application. So click on edit page, add a link, and here you have options. You could point to a stock image, a OneNote, a SharePoint site, a library, um, or you could upload something, or you can uh, create it from a link. And we're gonna select from a link. So enter a URL, it could be google.com, it could be a site that you like using, um, it, you know, it could be Pinterest or whatever um, URL you want to add. And then once you've entered the URL, click add. Okay, so now that you've added the URL, just wait for the page to update, you can see it loading. And then once it's uh, loaded, you've got to click on republish. That's some additional information about the link. You can ignore that. Once you've republished, you can see the link has appeared. To wrap up, those are the most common tasks you'll be asked to do as a site owner or administrator. If you want more detailed information about SharePoint, uh, search my channel. I have many videos that cover more advanced topics. Hope you enjoyed. Click like and subscribe. Thanks.